Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, today in history, I'm going back to 1979 for a very, very major uh, moment in Nigeria's um, political history. Um, it is um, described as the start of the Second Republic and, of course, uh, where the 1979 Constitution was also formed. Um, it says that the Second Nigerian Republic was a brief formation of the Nigerian state which succeeded after military governments uh, uh, formed and, of course, um, after the overthrow of the First Republic. The 1979 Constitution brought in the Second Republic, abandoning the what was called the Westminster system in favor of an American style of presidential system with a direct election um, um, system that eventually was um, brought in. Even if, yes, we, we claim to follow the American system of government, but that's mostly on paper. Uh, political parties were required to be registered in at least two-thirds of the states of the country, and each state had to have at least one member of the cabinet from it. Uh, we still have not been able to follow through with that also. Um, over time, Nigeria has had a series of constitutions, the 1999, which is the uh, most recent. The independent Nigeria's second constitution established the country back then as a federal republic and contested elections and political turbulence in the western region ended Nigeria's first republic in 1966 with the overthrow of uh, the government by majors in the Nigerian army, if you remember the 1966 coup. So in summary, basically, um, it and the, the establishment of the second constitution established the country as a federal republic, came into force, first of all, on the 1st of October 1963. The third anniversary, um, which we also celebrate as, um, the Nigeria's third anniversary, rather, which we've continued to celebrate on the day it was, uh, it, was uh, it became an independent nation. The 1963 constitution was based on the Westminster system. It continued in operation until the 1966 coup. And following the assassination of Nigerian military head of state Murtala Mohammed in 1976, his successor back then, Olusegun Obasanjo, uh, initiated the transition process to terminate military rule in 1979. And then a new constitution, which we're speaking about today, was <coughs> drafted. It saw, of course, the you know, uh, Westminster system uh, kicked out. In 1979, five political parties competed in a series of elections in which Alaji Shehu Shagari of the National Party of Nigeria was elected president. Obasanjo peacefully transferred power to Shagari uh, to become the first Nigerian head of state in Nigerian history to willingly step down. Um, and then, of course, later on, Good Luck Abella Jonathan was once again celebrated, you know, um, across the world as, you know, another Nigerian president in different times to um, let go of, you know, power even when he lost an election, even if it was different to a bus in just time anyway. Mm -hmm. But the 1979 was a major, major um, change in Nigeria's history. And, you know, it started, um, you know, a, a diff you know a different events that eventually have led us into adopting the 1999 constitution and where we are today. The turmoil that happened between 1979 and 1999 was also a lot um, with uh, different changes in, in government, military um, taking over once again. And then, of course, the events um, in 1998 with the death of Abacha and the new constitution in 1999. You would agree with me that the post-colonial era of most countries, especially in Africa, have been very interesting. And I just wish that us as a country, as a people, would be able to embrace our past. It's, it wasn't exactly um, beautiful, you know, considering the civil war and all the coups that we had. But I wish that we could just speak more comfortably and more openly about where we're coming from. I mean, if we, if we did, maybe it would pave the way for easier conversations right now with all these ethnic clashes and political parties and, you know, presidency zone to east or north and all of that. So I just feel we should have more open conversations about where we're coming from so we can easily talk about our present and, you know, walk into the future as a united Nigeria. It's also, you know, important to, you know, pick out the, the parts, you know, of that era that we maybe should learn from. Um, then, you know, Nigeria was celebrated across Africa, you know, as a you know, yes. country, you know, that had a great economy that everyone was envious of, you know, but with all the turmoil, like you mentioned, you know, the coups, uh, the overthrow you know, of governments here and there, um, we, we lost, you know, direction completely. Um, the 1979 constitution, people, you know, really celebrated because that, you know, seemed to be a constitution that would put us on the right path, you know, and then eventually when 1999 constitution came, um, at first, it was misunderstood, um, or it was accepted, you know, and then later on, we, you know, Nigerians got to then realize that it wasn't really a constitution that was um, um, set up for the people themselves. It, it seemed like a military constitution that was coated and cloaked with, you know, uh, uh, democratic, um, yes. you know, tenets. But 
Um, that's where we are today, basically. And you know, people would still argue that yes, that 99 constitution needs to be thrown away, and another one needs to be you know written yes. for us to be able to move forward. Let's uh, talk a bit now about sports and games away from politics. 19, I beg your pardon, 1895. <laughs> it was that year, um, February 9th, that uh, William J. Morgan created the game of volleyball. Well, he eventually, he first called it Mitonet, but eventually became to uh, be known as volleyball. It was a game that uh, basically mixed elements of basketball, of baseball, handball, and tennis. He continued to tweak the game and eventually settled on six teams on each side, separated by a net. So William J. Morgan invented this game, and uh, basically he decided to create a game that would allow Basically, he, he noticed that uh, the game of basketball was not meant for everyone to play, you know, considering height considerations. And uh, there were men who were not so strong. They were non-athletic adults, older adults. They could not keep up with the running, you know, up and down on the court. He wanted a game that everyone could play, no matter their age, no matter their physical ability. And he, that's when he combined, you know, elements from basketball, baseball, handball, tennis, badminton, and his own knowledge of sports, training methods, experience, to create the game of volleyball. And uh, William Morgan decided to experiment with this game. He created two teams of five men. They demonstrated it. And that's when he continued to tweak this. He eventually decided on six teams or six men on each side, on each side. of the team. Uh, volleyball was introduced uh, to Europe by American troops during the World War I when national organizations were formed. And on July 7th, 1896, the first game of volleyball was played at Springfield College. The first official beach volleyball tournament was held in 1948 at Will Rogers State Beach in Santa Monica in California. Uh, Morgan died sadly December 27th, 1942. But the game lives on. I mean, we in the country, Nigeria, we have a women's national volleyball team countries globally play the volleyball it has also been <clears throat> it also played in the olympics right now so yes this it's a game day, i've never played funny enough i played volleyball when i was in school when i was in uh, secondary school never actually played volleyball i mean i i, I, I watched it from afar and i didn't think it was interesting enough so i never bothered it was myself. fun it was fun for um, me you know, considering then, my height i was able to you know just jump and yeah <laughs> that would be <laughs> fun to see <laughs> good morning <laughs> All right, that's what we have for you today in history. In 1895 and in 1979, on the 9th of uh, February, uh, we are going to, of course, uh, be going on a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about things that are happening here in Nigeria and here in Lagos. Um, the Lekki toll gate controversy has once again risen over whether it should be reopened or not. Um, there's people who have called for it to continue or to remain shut simply because there's not been justice or compensation for those who allegedly died on that day, October 20th, 2020. And of course, in build up also to uh, the events that happened on the 20th of October. And so um, we're getting into that conversation next to see what our guests think.